Igneous rocks are one of the most fundamental rocks on Earth. They're rocks that form from the cooling of molten magma or molten rock that forms deep within the Earth. Igneous rocks can form very deep within the Earth and rise up and cool at the Earth's surface, in which case we call them extrusive or volcanic igneous rocks, or they can cool slowly deep within the Earth, which causes them to grow larger crystals. We get coarser grained rocks, we call those intrusive or plutonic igneous rocks. And today we're going to demonstrate how you can make something like an igneous rock right here in, in your kitchen. One of the easiest things to make is fudge, because fudge has a lot of different properties and we have to heat it up and melt it and then cool it in order to make it. How can you make fudge? It's pretty easy. You take some sweetened chocolate and we pour some of that in there. Oops. A little condensed milk. And what we're going to do with this condensed milk, oh look at that high viscosity thick condensed milk. We're going to put this on heat and we're going to melt it and if you really want some fluffy good fudge, add a few marshmallows in here. Okay, and we'll get that going, get that melting down. Once you've got your chocolate and your marshmallows and your milk melted into a nice slurry in the pan, you can add a little sugar and stir it up and you've got the makings of some good fudge. This is similar to what happens deep within the earth where we have many different minerals many different elements that have melted and then become embroiled in this melt and it isn't until they cool that they start to organize themselves. So as you pull the melted chocolate mixture out of the pan, you put it in the refrigerator and those atoms start to align themselves into molecules and organize themselves into minerals and the minerals grow within the melt until at the end of the day your melt is all gone and all you have left is a solid solution of minerals. That, in essence, is an igneous rock. Now, how do we classify igneous rocks? The first way is by texture, and that is the size and the arrangement of the minerals within a rock. I have here some fudge that we created, and we have two different colors of fudge, and the color signifies the composition of a rock. Now, composition is the chemical composition, or the types of minerals that make up the rock. Now, the lighter colored minerals here like in nature, have peanut butter or our silica or silicate minerals and those lighter colored minerals make one class of lighter colored rock that contain quartz, that contain feldspar and minerals that actually melt at low temperatures. They're the first things to melt and they're the last things to cool. And there's a separate class of igneous rocks called mafic rocks which have very little silica in them. They have a lot of dark minerals such as iron and magnesium. We call those mafic rocks. And here our dark fudge represents those. So we have a compositional difference. We also have texture in that some of our fudge is very fine grained. This fudge, you can't even see the individual crystals within the fudge. So we know that that cooled in the refrigerator very quickly and that it was all of one uniform type of mineral. We call that a aphanitic texture and it's common in rocks that erupt at the surface, like rhyolites or basalts. On the other hand, we have these pieces of fudge that have lots of big chunks in them, or large crystals. If you allow this to cool very slowly, and there's different compositions within the rock, you get different minerals forming and you get a different texture. We call that a phanaritic texture. In the light rock, we would call that a granite, because it has a lot of quartz and feldspar. In the dark rock, we would call that a gabbro because it has a lot of dark mafic minerals like iron and magnesium. All of these make up a spectrum of igneous rocks. Sometimes we can get mixtures of the two. For example, these lovely muffins we have here, these blueberry muffins. Sometimes we get igneous rocks that have some large minerals of a different composition mixed with some of, a different, of the other composition. We call those porphyritic rocks. And they just tell us that the igneous rock has gone through different periods of history, where one type of magma may have been interacting with another type of magma, or it cooled multiple times. Many different things that a geologist would try and work out about the history of an igneous rock. We also can look at things like this granola. 
This granola comes in all different sizes and flavors. In, in the kitchen, you can look at this and say, if I find an igneous rock that looks like this, I know it was fairly uniform in its composition and it cooled very quickly because the grains, the crystals are small. But in this case, this is a very large grained piece, so I know it cooled slowly, and it has large pieces in it, so that means that there was different compositions within this piece as it cooled slowly. So we can tell a lot about the magmas and how they cool by looking at their texture and their composition, and that is how we classify igneous rocks. <laughs>